Hello and welcome to the Ollie Podcast. Lewis here. Um, hope you're all enjoying your time in COVID. We hope you're all safe and, and keeping good. So a bit of housekeeping. Deliveries are actually starting to get a bit better. We haven't had many reports. I think there's literally been one or two reports of slow delivery. So if that's anything to go by, I think things are starting to... Um, get a bit more smooth and fluid with regards to the delivery and that is probably going to be a nationwide thing so very very good news that, uh, news in that regard so to other big news the SS20 is launching any day now I'm not too sure with uh, regards to the date that we launched this I don't want to say three days or five days because I'm not too sure what it will be but we are very very close to launching the SS20 so please keep your eyes peeled lots of new products coming we're really excited to get them up so yeah we'll move on to the show guys really exciting show um, with none honour than Olympian Shane Ryan. Shane competed at the 2016 Olympics in swimming, got the whole way to the semi-finals, which for anybody that really isn't uh, in tune with kind of the level of competition at the Olympics, it's just absolutely ridiculous. To put it into perspective, these guys train for four years straight for one race, one or two races, which in my mind just completely fucking boggles it. So we do ask for a bit of patience in the show. This was actually our first ever podcast recording and i'm only saying this because i felt like i could have done a better job but you know there will be times where literally i think i forgot what we were talking about at one stage because i got so excited or because i got so muddled up but you know what we decided to leave it all in because it's just part of the learning process and um we kind of want to practice what we're preaching here so shane himself is an epic dude he he's so motivational just talking to him you fucking kind of want to get out and like train or just do something he is he's just got such a good source of energy and i love this conversation with him there's so much to take away like you get a really cool insight to the dedication and journey it takes to actually go to the olympics um he he himself as an individual is you know he's an epic student he loves challenging his coaches he loves asking questions and and from what i took that was actually like a big part of his success is actually questioning what you're learning and what you're being taught and and question it to see why it works or why it does a certain thing and um, that was something I really admired because whenever people move into positions and they're trying to learn they're just going to suck everything in from their coach and just trust it but you know that's one part of it but to know why you're doing something can give you a real purpose so above all else it shows you the focus you'll need to succeed and, and it's I've never had an insight into what an Olympian does and this was a really really cool conversation t- that showed that so I think you'll get hype from listening um, Shane's an awesome dude I would really ask that you follow his journey um his instagram uh, plug has just been updated it's she and ryan ollie that's she and ryan o-l-y yeah listen thank you so much uh for listening we would ask that you continue to review subscribe um and like and share the shows if and where you can and if you enjoy them and yes i hope you enjoyed today's show and and again thanks guys <laughs> Shane, how are you, mate? Are you good? Doing well, yeah. Doing very, very well today. So yeah, thank you for having me on. Appreciate no it. No worries. Um, so Shane, when did you come to Ireland? Um, back in 2015 was when I like declared my residency and all that okay. stuff. But I've had my citizenship for about like 15 years. Cool, cool. And do you have any family from here? Yeah, so um, my dad, he's from uh, Port Arlington in County Leash, and he's one out of ten. Oh, really? And he's the only one in the States, so all nine of them are... Uh, are there us all living down in Port Arlington, down Lee Road. That's cool. Yeah, so I have a big, big family here, even on my mom's side. My mom was born in the States, and she's one out of eight, so big, big Irish family. Crazy, crazy family. Big, big question, mate. Um, yeah, USA or Ireland? Oof. To live in? I, I always say I'm an Irish American, but it's... Uh, <laughs> mate, you're either one or the other. They're, it's two completely different atmospheres. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing, you know, like, I like living in Ireland now. Um, better than I did beforehand just because of like where I'm living at the opportunities I have you know and um, the way like things have been worked out for me this time around I'm actually really enjoying myself awesome. now and like things are going very well last time you know I did qualify for the Olympics but it was a, it was a really really hard time mm-hmm. for me living here in Good. Ireland well actually I'll uh, jump in on that so we'll give because a lot of people don't know who you are yeah um, up until a couple of months ago I didn't know who you are so this actually be really informative yeah, for me course, yeah. so yeah we briefly heard him talking, um, and during my intro as well, Shane is an Olympic level swimmer. He um, qualified for what? R- Rio. What yeah, Rio. To, yeah, went to Rio in 2016. Which is awesome. Um, Semi final as well. Even better, bro. Um, get that in the Insta bio. <laughs> um, yeah, so Shane's been a competitive swimmer. What age did you start competitive swimming at? Oof. 
I've always been swimming, but I never really get, like really cared for swimming until I was like 18 when colleges were coming up and like offered me four rides, and that's like one year it's like fifty thousand dollars. So I was like, mm, gotta do. It. Maybe I should stop playing American football, stop playing volleyball, and like maybe <laughs> start focusing on swimming. So. Uh, no, my mom, my mom always, like, I always give my credit to my mom because, like, she's the one, like, that helped me. I was always, I've always been swimming. I don't know when I started because I think she's told me I was a baby when she had me swimming. And is sports something that is really prevalent in, in your life? Do you, have you always, obviously, you've always been into sports from what I know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sports, I've always, my mom and my dad, they were very, very good with, like, giving me the freedom above making sure I was, did what I wanted to do. You know, if I wanted to play lacrosse for a season, I played lacrosse for a season. But I would go to school, play lacrosse for my school, or play volleyball or basketball or soccer, football. Um, and I would actually go home, eat, and then I would go to practice real quick. That's cool. So I would do two two days. And I don't know, how, looking back at it now, I don't know how I did it. But it's just, I guess that's how I'm wired back yeah. then, you know, a little crazy kid. And do you have, I assume both your parents are kind of they're big into their sports yeah so my dad he played gaelic football for count like county football which is quite good for gaelic football and he ended up going over to the states and played toured around the states and played um like played gaelic football Serious? all over they played in san francisco new york boston um so and he ended up in like like philadelphia and that's where they met my mom where he met my mom and uh so yeah yeah it's, it's been big and my mom's called backstroke bertha because she's a she's a swim coach and she swam <laughs> so she got me into the backstroke and everything is that her that needs to be her instagram name oh backstroke bertha yeah <laughs> so no because she's uh she's a good swimmer you know she's a you know she really helped us out like me and my like brother and sister you know um like she had like she worked like three jobs like she was a swim coach a water aerobics um teacher and then also assistant teacher with like special needs kids, but she never really took on a full job just because she wanted to put us like in the right opportunities and everything like that. So now she finally got a full full job, which is great. That's you awesome. Know? But we're all out of the house, like we're all grown, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I praise a lot for my yeah. mom because she sacrificed a lot. That's interesting because you obviously seem like you're a close knit family and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that your parents got you into sports so, at so, such a young age and it's actually a really cool thing that they are into training and, and sports themselves. But I would assume there is an age, and you already kind of said it, and you know, whenever you were 18 and um, college was coming up, and like you say, it was kind of a one way ticket to a year of free scholar or well, free scholarship. I got, I got five and a half years out of that. You know, that's, you know, and I know. Coming out debt free. Yeah, exactly. In blessed, America is blessed, huge. Blessed um, so, like, that, that was probably a big turning point in your life. Um, oh, yeah. And even though you'd been competitively swimming, it's kind of when you get to that age and you have to make the decision, right, is this what I want to do? Because you get an opportunity like that, and if you have the natural ability to go and do yeah. that, you know, what was the thought process at that age? Because you were still so young, yeah. but yet it's a massive jump. Um, for me, my thought process was like, you know, yeah, I was a little crazy growing up, but like I had a good head on my shoulders, and um, but I had to think of the future, you yeah. know, and I had to think, of, I had to put myself first, and. A lot of college kids will just go to schools where like there's big party schools. Now I did go to a party, uh, party school. Penn State University was a big one I went to, yeah, but Penn State. but I mean we had fifty we have fifty thousand students to go there, and that's just undergrad. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a that's like that's a lot of people right there. And um, I'd say that's more than my whole uni university put together. Yeah, easily. Like our freshman class was eight thousand. Serious. Yeah, and that's undergrad. That's not I'm talking about like graduate school. You know, and like we have a law school there as well. So for me to put my future in the best bit and like Penn State was like a last chance, like a last like spot for me because like the, all their athletic program was really, really good. But their swimming program was OK. But, you know, the coaches, I just like went up there as like a sign of respect because they came down to my house, the coaches. And it's only three how three hours away from my house. So I was like, all right, I'll go up there. You know, I was really close to going to Auburn, Sorry, Tennessee. Sorry, let me interrupt. Um, for anybody outside oh, the yeah. island of Ireland, he's just said a three hour drive. So it's not that far away. Through our drive over here, man. That's one end of the island to the other. Oh yeah. You gotta. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. That's nothing. I drove after college. I drove 18 hours straight from Philadelphia to Auburn, Alabama, to train with the coach. Jeez. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I've, I've moved four times in one year. Oh, bro. Four times in one year. Sorry. Anyway, just yeah. had to jump. So on that. yeah. So like. I went up there and I enjoyed it. And like, you know, the area that I'm from on the whole East Coast, everyone knows Penn State, you know, and I was like, all right, first off, I'm coming out debt free. Um, also, like when I get out, I know multiple people that have jobs just because they went to Penn State. So I had, I was like, all right, well, my alumni association is one of the biggest in the world. 
Um, I put myself in a really good position of, you know, not coming out debt free and like, you know what, even though if it's not the best swimming program, I'm going to say like, screw it. And I'm going to put myself in a better position. I'm going to, I can do my own thing, put myself in a great position. And, you know, I'm a multi-time, like all, all American swimmer. I still hold big 10 conference records and everything like that. And I was NCAA, mm -hmm. like runner up. And like, you know, the guy who beat me was Ryan Murphy who owns the Olympic world, like, the world record. And he's Olympic champ. That's cool. You know, some. But even so, again. At so that age, yeah. yeah, and I haven't been home since. Yeah, I've well, been on my own since I was eighteen. That's crazy, bro. Because like you can even see, you know, people have these big, massive aspirations and dreams. Oh, I want to swim at the Olympics, and it's cool because that wasn't your original kind of goal. It was never your original idea, or what. It was always in the back of my mind, but like you know, I just took it one step at a time. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. like did what I needed to do to put myself through college and everything like that. And then an opportunity arose, like halfway through when I was my jun done my junior year, um, and that's when I moved moved over to Ireland. Awesome. I think and, and what kind of what I was getting, I was even at that that age of eighteen is like, um, you know, I don't know how to. I want to try and bring this together eloquently. Is you know, your end goal wasn't the Olympics. Your end goal was to go and get education. Get education. You know, you so said fast, that even yeah. if Penn State's not going to be the best program in the country, you still know that if you show up and you do your shit right and you do it well and you train hard, you can still have that opportunity for success. And that's kind of what you got. And um, that's the interesting thing. It's like, you know, your big your big goal was Olympics. That was like your vision yeah. in the background. That's mm -hmm. kind of what really spurred you on. But how you got from A to B was so bump and grind. And that's kind of a really cool thing to conceptualize that a lot of people um, think that it's literally just a straight path. You know, yeah. it's, it's, no, for it's you. all over the place. Exactly, like man. My freshman year was a rough year for me. Yeah, and, and that's you know? the thing a lot of people won't see as well. Is like, because it's on a journey. Oh, you, you went to the Olympics, you're doing this. Yeah, it's cool, but like, think of having to move away from your family when you're 18. Oh, yeah. Think of the 20 plus hours in a pool you're spending, Monday to Friday. And then I had, to do, I had literally had school on top of that as well. Exactly. And then I had study hall hours. Like in each mm. week you have uh, eight hours of mandatory study hall hours you have to do. For me to get by, I had to do uh, 24 hours a week. It was nonstop. If I wasn't training, if I wasn't like, I always was on the go eating. Yeah. Like I had to work hard for it because that's just how I'm wired. But I mean, I know hard work. Yeah, that's easy. Now. And even and even that that could actually bring us in really naturally to the next week part is like I want to try and contextualize what makes you you and what you've done in yeah. your lifestyle. So already, you know, let's take that freshman year whenever. So you, you've moved away um, you've you've moved away. You've joined Penn State. Um, you kind of have the scholarship now. And now, you know, were you always independent? Were you always um, um, kind of like and what I mean by that? Yes. Is, yeah. Did you do your life admin? Did you cook, clean, do all that well, stuff yourself? Freshman year, I mean, it's a big jump living with your parents i mean especially 18 years old i mean i was also the i was first in the 100 back first in the 100 free and second in the 100 free in the country at the time so i was like a top prospect in the whole country so yeah. i'm like i have to say i was a little arrogant little little shithead basically going into school so i was like oh going to a big school you know penn state they're going to help me buy with everything you know with, with the classes and this is why I said, like, I struggled freshman year. It was, like, my freshman year, first semester, like, I had uh, my uncle passed away. He just, like, dropped, just woke up and dropped dead oh at, like, 48 God years old. Man. So, like, first time dealing with death. And then literally a month later, my grandfather died. And, like, we were very, very close to my uncle and my grandfather. So that was the first time experiencing that's death, which is crazy. crazy. That is crazy. Um, and then, like, I just, like, didn't go to class. I felt like it was just, I was just all over the place. And I was ineligible. And that means I couldn't swim for Penn State at Big Tens or NCAAs. And I was literally the fastest freshman in NCAA that year. I could have came like second, third, and the hundred free, fifth, hundred back, and um, but it all turned around. Like I was literally about to quit swimming, and I thought that I was going to lose my scholarship. I was literally about to like just drop everything. But I had the perseverance. I got the help I needed because I asked for it, um, and then literally turned my life around. Like this one woman named Cheryl Anderson. She like literally is like my second mom up at Penn State. She helped me through everything. Um, and then that summer, um, literally eight months after I went to like the U S Olympic trials in 2012, I was like 26. I was a 56.3 with only, with the proper training and the right head on my head, like on my shoulders, I ended up dropping three seconds. Holy shit. I went 53, eight as an 18 year old. That's crazy. And that was when I, things started changing for me, like my whole mentality. Cause that put me like ninth in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, shit, Olympics are actually possible now. Yeah realistic you know and then after that like that my sophomore year it was a big 10 like summer of the year um got big 10 conference records 
um, won Big Tens multiple times, you know, and like that's something I can really proudly say and represent Penn State doing that way. My junior year did okay as well, um, but then that junior year, that's when I moved. I like like finished like all my finals, and I was like, you know what, I'm dropping everything. I have an opportunity to go live in Ireland, and I con- contacted some Ireland and moved over immediately. Awesome. Yeah, and then that's they like, they put that scholarship on hold for me as well, which is another great thing. Yeah, that's big. Like, mate, that sounds like like you've probably just covered a lot. Like, you've probably covered what three, four years there minimum, four, five, five years. That was uh, three years right there. Three. So there's three years alone. Like even having that kind of bump and grind. Going down, up, down. You know, that's kind of, um, whether it's business, whether it's training, you know, for whatever sport, whether it's, um, you know, you're a, an athlete. I think that's a really, even to kind of isolate what you just said, is like that first year, especially. Um, it's a, rea- a reality check. Yeah, man. So I was rock and bottom. It is, and it's kind of like, you know, people will get to the stage where, right, they know what they want to do. And... Always, 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 always the first year, even the second year, is so hard. So and hard. that's And that's kind of like when you, you hear the whole cliche um, quotations, or you see them, or the cliche quotations on Instagram, it's like, oh, the, the first 80% of people who start in the first year will fail. And you know what? There's definitely some. Because some of them are stubborn. They want to do it all on their own, but you have to ask for help. And yeah, that's what I, I, mean, I didn't learn that. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. You have to ask for help. And that, that brings us on. Put yourself part. out there. Yeah, you're bang on. So it's like, what I, what I want to say is like, initially, no matter what you do, and it's being a word, like I want to say this now so that you can maybe recognize that you might be in, in a position where that you're actually going through this and you don't realize is that, um, you know, think how bump and grind you got there, think how, how far away you got from your goal, like literally you were so unaligned with it and yet your sheer perseverance and will, you just had to get on it. Yeah, you had to. Other you just have to put your shit behind yourself and just cop on and just and go. Then, yeah, like, you know, um, kind of related to you and what you said and that you reached out and that was a big thing as well. You know, a lot of people think, especially a lot of kind of, you know, maybe younger guys, guys that have bigger egos and, and I use that in a good way. You know, an ego to me is not a bad yeah. thing. Um, but reaching out and having the humility to know that you're not the fucking best. Yeah. You don't know best, and there is people that are willing. You to always learn. have to learn. Yeah. Even if you think you know, there's a big. I always say there's a big difference in self confidence and arrogancy. You know, like there's a lot of people I know, and a lot of people that are still in the swimming world and in the business world as well that are just so arrogant. They won't give you a time and day, or they won't give you a time and day to approach you or like learn a little bit more about you to see what you're about. Yeah, I'm the type of person that like you know I'm a, like I'll confront someone about something. You know, like I was saying about one of my lifting coaches. You know, he's he knows so much, but I, so I know a lot as well. So like I mean, and we butt heads, but it's a good yes. way of doing it. But you also have to be open to learn. You're never going to know everything big time, big time. you have to learn like am i doing this the right way yeah. it, um is it can i do this a different way it's the same thing with my coach uh ben hickson uh he's been a lot around a long time with something he's like 30 32 33 yeah. you know but like he's had so much experience with what he's done and he was also a swimmer himself so like if i'm feeling really bad on one of the days or if like i don't want to do a set or i'm like why are we doing this like this looks stupid hard yeah i'm like why are we doing this like what am I going to benefit from this? Like yeah. how are we going to approach this? Like what way do you want me to swim like this? You know, yeah. and you have to ask. You have to put yourself out there, and you have to lower your guard because you're not, you're never going to know everything. Yeah, I think that was, that was definitely something that I struggled with. I still struggle with it now, and mm-hmm. kind of one of the bad um, implications that will happen if you don't take on board what Shane said now is you kind of you'll experience what I experienced and that you do think that you can go and do everything yourself and to an extent that's a good thing you know for me personally I can only relate to the position of being a startup and having to do a lot exactly yeah you know so I had to learn skills and fucking design marketing and you have to learn it quick resource and sourcing Mm -hmm. uh, management team manager time management all that stuff Um, so there are elements that you have to do yourself but you will realize, you know, there will be a chink in your armor or you will realize in your path, there is a massive, 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 big speed bump mm-hmm. there that you, you cannot um, do it without the yeah. help of other people. And I think that's what's really prevalent in your mm-hmm. journey is that like, although that girl, that lady was not helping you in the pool directly, you know, everything outside of it, you know, that's, that's as much about being successful yeah. as, it, as what you do in the but pool. But the most important thing is you learn about yourself. Yeah, big time. And you learn about yourself. You learn about how you approach things differently. So you can come stick a step back and then reassess yourself. I'm like, okay, if I'm reacting like this to this, 
what's a better way where I can get more out of them? Awesome. Because you you need a you need to suck dry everyone. You Fucking need to nice you time. need to yeah. pull as much out out of everyone else as you can because it's only going to benefit you. Thank and you. I'm a big believer in those. Like you always ask. The oh, more you God. ask, the worst they're going to say is no, and you're back to square one. Yeah. But you never know. I like that. You know, and like I mean, it's the same thing with like going to like I'm six six so. Yeah. Uh, talk about airplanes <laughs> i always ask you got an exit seat open you got a lane but i always ask and they you know and they just be polite about it you know exactly. and that's the main, that's the main thing even if they say no i'd be like all right well thank you so much for your time i appreciate it that's you know? a really cool takeaway and like generally um like we haven't even got on to to kind of contextualize and what makes you you but that's a really good starting point um, mm-hmm. uh you know we're just flowing don't don't yeah. don't be afraid to ask man. and you're right because you know sometimes you have to like I know like a lot of the Irish, like we're very proud. Oh, we are proud. And some people can be goddamn stubborn. Yeah, <laughs> it's, but you have to throw that out the window. Yeah. And I think as well, you know, it's, it's something that I've really experienced, especially working with Patty and working with people who I regard as like good operators mm-hmm. in their space. Is like, it was easy for me to trust them, but I'm still like, it's like half the time I'm telling him to do, how to do his job. And really he knows, like he knows, Lewis, mm-hmm. shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But he's still talking me through it. And but why like some it. of the, you want people around you that will tell you to shut your mouth. Oh yeah, up. man. And that's, you need, you need people like that because they know what's like, they understand like who you are yeah, and what you're doing. Big time. So you need people like that. And like, I have people around me, like some of my teammates, they're like, why the fuck are you doing that? You don't need to be doing that. Yeah. Or my coach would be like, listen, I know what you're trying to do, but you don't need to be doing it right yeah. now. Like, like I switched up my gym today. I just did a little, lot of little bits, you know, I wasn't yeah. supposed to be doing it today, but I did it because this is what like I already told him. He's like, yeah, go on. You can do it. Okay. You know, that's, um, <clears throat> that's actually a really cool point. Like, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just dropping them out here. Um, what was the point we just contextualized there? Um, I want to do this sweet. See, we can chop and change this out. So it's no problem. It was asking questions, and then what was that second part there that we've just done, Shane? The I'm to get away, we can angle it. It's literally. No, we're talking about it. like you know, like the pride, you know, and like how sometimes you have to, you have to come asking in, you have to you have to come in and like kind of throw yes, it out the door. Yes, I, I got it, I got it. So, and we're back. Um. So yeah, the one thing that I wanted to, you were saying about asking questions and stuff is like working with people that are honest with you as well. Like you were saying that you challenge your coach and stuff. Yeah. Um, but that's good because it gives you understanding because if you're just a yes man and you showed up and you done everything and you didn't understand why i mean as an athlete you know yourself you're really not equipping yourself to be a yeah, and i've, I've been in that position before that was me last um last summer before worlds you know yeah. it's all nutritionist got up to 99 kg and like did everything i needed to do in the water outside of the water i didn't really ask why but I just did it because I was like, you know, I put my belief into the coaches and, you know, I was like, you know what? I believe in them. I want to do everything. I did it to a T, but it just didn't work out. But that's okay because I learned more about myself that way. Yeah. I know what my body can adapt in that way. So I know what not to go to. So now, like, I took control of my own, own nutrition. I have a little bit more say in my practices. Um, but I'm not saying that was all bad because all that, all that, like, all that swimming I did and all that nutrition that I did, like, is benefiting me now. Because, you know, I know what I need to do for nutrition wise, which yeah. I'm leaned out now. I'm like town 10.2% body fat compared to 13%, but I'm 94 now and I'm like stronger than I was and faster in the water. Boom. Also, um, the, my aerobic base is like stupid. Like I have the speed and the power, but my aerobic base is still really good from last season, which That's is, awesome. you know, you never lose like with training. It's like, yeah, it might not work in your benefit. You might not like it. It's but it, it's, it's helping you some way. Yeah. And that's what my coach, and I, if my coach told me, listen, you're not going to swim fast at Worlds, but you're going to have this aerobic base for your Olympic trials coming around. I'm like, all right. And I probably would have swam faster at Worlds yeah. if you just told me that straight yeah. up. That's cool though. I like that. And I think as well, viewing it from that perspective, really. Um, so I always talk about the path of success. So mm-hmm. it's like, um, and I briefly touched on it earlier, people think it's a very, very straight line. When it's really, really not, no. and like, oh god, no! Like you, so you said, even, even in, even in that kind of shitty. How long were you with that nutritionist? Six months. Yeah, she told me to take like serious mass, which is like twelve hundred <laughs> a serving. I, I had to take two of oh, them a day. If you're a plus five bro, meals, you, you so that's seven what, meals a day. That's that's fucking stupid. That is ridiculous. What? Yeah. And I was only lifting twice a um, week, but then I was also like swimming like a lot as yeah. well. But like, I did not but need to be eating that the, much. The big thing is, is like that, that's what I would view as, uh, as a path of success. And that even though it did not directly correlate to you getting a faster 
swim time. Mm -hmm. It meant that you learned something along the way. You know, maybe you learned that you didn't like being groggy going into a pool or um, eating too much food meant you couldn't. Oh, my properly. caffeine intake was st I was on minimum thousand milligrams a but day. But you know what I mean? And it's, it's like, like you know, and at least that's that's one more thing that you can add to your book mm -hmm. of how to make Shane successful. That yeah. is one more line. And that you know, works for me. Don't you know, eat like shitloads like because it makes you feel X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know, don't. Um, you're not really a good because and the other thing is is imagine you get down your career you get you know a nutrition it comes to you and maybe you're at a more peak point in your career maybe you're doing faster times and then someone comes and they're like yo what about whopping you up to like nearly 100 kilos you're like no bro already done. I've already done it yeah I know how it feels it's not my job but like when I'm know. done swimming hell yeah I'll get up to 100 <laughs> you know like I can get up to 100 and start becoming like a power lifter because I got some power <laughs> you know, like, but not right now. I need to be light yeah. and strong and like 94, yeah. 95 K, yeah. kg. Man, I'm feeling great. Like I swam, I was in a meet in, um, in Belgium like two weeks ago. I swam faster there than I did at Worlds. That's like crazy. I'm second in the world on the 50 back right now. Yeah. And w like, what? And I was training. Like I'm talking about like, that, like squatting 120 kg for like two sets of five like you know at the end of my set then hang cleaning 115s yeah you know like monday wednesday hard training then going into the meet feeling fatigued not knowing what to expect but just put my mindset being like all right you know what let's see what we can do let's That's see awesome. like what we it's not it's not about a lot of people are like you know when we're in a time it's like we're worried about like oh i need to get that olympic cut you know i need to get that 53 yeah. 85 you know yeah. you can't worry about that you know sometimes you have to take a step back take i always take like three big breaths before i go up right behind the block you know and just to kind of be like just worry about the process how am i going to swim this like yeah. the first 50 and i'm going to dive in get this number of kicks just be big hold my breath and then just come yeah. home build my tempo if you focus on that kind of stuff instead of the output of the time and it's the same thing with anything, yeah. you know? I would kind it's of like you, you take your body out of that and you just focus on the process and that gives you something to focus on while you're swimming and you're not worried about the time. Okay. The time's gonna come. I would I would um, kinda say that, that you kinda contextualize visualization really well without saying the magic V word. Yeah. Um, you know, what you do to do in your three breaths, asking what you how you're gonna execute that. I know a lot of guys, especially in CrossFit's kind of my space, so I know a lot of guys that would do the exact same. It's like literally they already know they have already visualized the wad so well that they know by halfway what time they'll be on or yeah. what movement they'll be on at such and such part of the workout or what's going to blow up first and they, you know in doing that you know that extra awareness pre-race like and i've done it before for my own competition and it really does help it really helps so all about the process of it yeah you know but like I, and, I, and that's the big thing i want to just take that there because i think we're we'll wrap up journey i think everybody has a good idea of who you are so we're going to move into the nitty-gritty stuff now but um to wrap up well is like it is it's all about focusing on the process and especially whenever the journey's so long and it's yeah. you know your goals are literally four years at yeah time, basically which is so like the vision that you need to have to really latch on to that long-term goal is massive mm -hmm. so like in you setting these smaller short-term kind of um internal goals that's kind of how you bring success and progression yeah you know and that's a big thing that i want to kind of um lay out is that it is it's a wee thing you do every day you know it's a whole small victories repeated daily not to drop that in it's all about the little things yeah big that's time. all that's mean because for me it's like every practice i only focus on the little things yeah it's like if i'm not feeling right with my right arm going in i'm like all right how can i change it so i'm focusing on that and then once i get that feel i focus on something else like oh i'm not kicking the right way i'm breathing too high too high up or something like that it's all about the little things because all those little things and that's why like michael phelps is so good and like what at what he did, you know, because he focused all on the little things. He got all the little things up uh, right, and all those little things will all add up to the bigger bigger point. You know, it's like saying you're trying to get like get up to a heavy hand clean. You overload the nervous system with like 150 kg, just clean pull, just throw it throw it up, you know, and like just getting that movement a couple of times. But then you go up to like your main weight, like 120 kg. Uh, for like a power clean or something like that that will come up a lot a lot quicker because it's like that was a one little step that yeah, you did yeah. to help your process to get to that main goal Big you know and that's why michael Phelps is so good and that's why a lot of olympians and like including myself we focus a lot on the little things and we, we nitpick a lot you that's know? cool that's a cool way mm -hmm. thing to isolate even um I'll not even add to that because you've kind of contextualized real well. But yeah. yes, like I said, I think everybody has a really clear idea on your journey and who you are and kind of why you do what you do. Well, we'll actually get to why you do what you do. But um, 
probably now moving on to the thing that I'm really interested in. So my personal interests are, I am kind of, I wouldn't say I'm obsessed with success, but um, kind of- The understanding of success. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm intrigued in kind of human psychology and what makes someone someone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested in, in successful individuals and kind of one thing that we came up with whenever we were kind of writing the script for this show was that success really does come in uh, different shapes and sizes, comes mm -hmm. in different forms and um, how it looks and feels is totally different relative to the individual. Um, so like, I want to pick your brain. Yeah. I want to see what makes you you. Um, kind of simple, simple questions and they'll definitely lead on. But you know, kind of we'll go through the basics of, uh, you know, kind of what I think brings success to someone and that is infrastructure in a life. Mm -hmm. So that is, what is your daily structure? What is your routines? What are your um, traits? What are your habits that you do um, every day? And kind of we'll go off that. So even like, you know, what's the standard there for you? Like what's your Monday Oof. to Friday? So basically, I mean, it varies each day. So Monday, we'll wake up. We have practice from 7.30 to 9.30, right? And then we'll wake up, go to practice. Then we get a little rest and we lift on Monday. Then we go back at like 3 o'clock uh, for a practice. That's one day, right? there. That's one day. That's Monday. Tuesday, depending on what week it is, we'll either have morning in the pra practice in the morning and then practice in the afternoon. Thursday, uh, Wednesday, we'll have a swim and then a lift again. And then we have that whole afternoon off and then Thursday afternoon or Thursday morning off. Then we have Thursday afternoon practice. And then Friday, we'll have Friday morning and then Friday afternoon and then Saturday morning. But the Friday morning, we'll swim and then lift again and swim in the afternoon for Friday. And then Saturday, we'll just swim. But that's not even including like physio and going yeah, and doing all extras. like your little, the, all the little extra bits. So, I mean, I think I've added up. It's around 30 hours, 35, 30, 30 hours a week. That's Plus, scary. it's like you go home, you cook. You, yeah. like, you go home and cook, and like that's part of like Do your, your routine out, and like just life. You know, you need to eat well. You know, you are what you eat. You know, that's I mean, you're not going to put like cheap gas into a Ferrari. Exactly. You know, it's like you have to make sure you put like the premium gas or petrol, so, like the better gas in the Ferrari for it to perform better. And that's basically what we have to do. Yeah, the, main, the main infrastructure of your life is really kind of you have these big, big block. Um, you know, during your week, you obviously have your set training times. Yeah. And essentially, you form form your life around these training, training yeah. times. Yeah. I mean, I can't like just go out on like dates or go yeah. to dinner or go out with like some of the guys. You know, yeah. some nights just because it's like I have a goal in mind. You know, like yeah, there's gonna be sometimes you have to have a life. You have to separate that, and that's sometimes what a lot of people fall into that little hole where it's like train, 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 train. There's yeah. nothing else. You need to make sure that you have to separate your personal life from your training life. I go 110% into everything I do, but then you have to take yourself out of that. You know, and you even, have to, you have to keep note, this good. And, and even a side mind. note that, you know, what do you do to relax? What is your version? Um, I mean, I'm a big, I love food. So like I'll go in and like, I'll try to like bring some along with me and go into town. Like there's Dublin's great for food. You know, oh, you yeah. just go and try little things and all that. And uh, that's what I love doing just to kind of go out and just to try new food. And like, that's like, that's not bad at all, you know, and try to always stay on the healthier side with <laughs> you it. You could do a lot worse than you. Oh like yeah. Eating, trust me. <laughs> so I do that and like, I'm a, like, I like PlayStation, but I just kind of just relax, you know, yeah. I love like, you know, I have a barbecue in my backyard. So I love barbecue and having some of the guys over just to come over and cook and like, I'll cook for them. Like I'm a good barbecue. I'm a barbecue master. Oh bro. That's a big uh, statement. Yeah. Shrimp. You got shrimp, steak, salmon. You can cook it all. <laughs> vegetables awesome. you know so yeah um, so like i just kind of just take a break from the you know the training side of it things you know that's cool so even to add another layer to that um productivity kick let's just use that analogy so you have a routine in that you have your training blocks you formulate your training around it what are your habits and traits like in delivering on that so for example oh, yeah. do you have so we're going to come out with all the buzzwords so do you have, you know, you got your discipline, you got your time management, because those two go together. Um, you know, you have your kind of weekly goals or daily goals, you know, that's kind of the way I yeah. operate. Um, you know, so like, you, there's obviously some big degree of time management in there. So what do you like time-wise? And you know, I'm pretty what, good. I mean, everyone can always be better on time management. No one's ever result, like, everyone's like, oh, I'm on time all the time. It's like, sometimes you are, sometimes you aren't, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we have to be at the pool like 15, 20 minutes beforehand just to make sure we're stretching all that stuff, get our water bottles ready, get our bodies ready. But for me, it's like, I love like working hard. You know, I like making sure that like at the end of the practice, like, you know, I was like, I can come out and be like, all right, I did a good okay. job. Like, I didn't leave any stone on turn. I didn't like awesome. half-ass this workout. Awesome. You know, and yeah. like even like towards the end of the week when you get tired, like this past Saturday, like I was doing like this backstroke set and I was like, 
I know I can be faster on it and like, but my body's completely wrecked. But I know the next time we do this, I'm going to put a little bit more, try to put a little bit more emphasis on it, but it's just for my whole week of training, Yeah. you know, and like, it's just like my body couldn't really handle Mm -hmm. it. couldn't get up to that, but the effort was there though. So I always try to come out with a good level mind of like, you know, I did, I did a good job on that yeah. one. And my coach, I want my coach to say that was really good today. Shane. In terms, in terms of your discipline, um, you know, adhering. So even I, I think I have a really good sense of this and hopefully kind of anyone listening does too, is that you seem to be incredibly disciplined. Um, and that's one thing that I find is comfortable. But I enjoy it though. That's the main thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not a grind, I, but I find that interesting because, you know, discipline to some people is a perceived kind of. It's a perceived effort. It's oh fuck, I have to do this. You just do it. There's yeah, but you know that that it, seems you know? to be that seems to be very ingrained in you. Whereas for the likes of me, I really need to practice discipline. Mm-hmm. I need to. But over time, it gets easier, though. Oh, for sure. You but know? and I'm inherently lazy, mm-hmm. and I know that. Um, I mean, you know, so there's for me, it's like I know that I have certain things the way I do them that remind me that it's a discipline thing, mm-hmm. and I'll do them in a certain way to remind me of yeah. that. Um, but like. You know, so obviously, with your time management, with your the infrastructure of life, there is a huge amount of this. There's no point in even talking about that. Um, your characteristics as such, you know, you're uber competitive or you're not competitive, or you know, I'm competitive you, in every aspect, really? like even for like little like Leinster meets, like where like, like 12 year old kids are right next to me. I still <laughs> get nervous to race, really. Oh, 100%. I still get awesome. nervous. Everyone's like. Everyone's like, why are you nervous? Like, even like I got nervous, like at our short course when there was only two relays, we were trying to get the record. Yeah, I was like, well, you never know when you could just step up and do something, you yeah, know? Exactly. It's like, I still like love swimming, regardless if I go to the Olympics or not, I'm still going to continue swimming, whatever, because I just I love, love the sport. And there's a lot, there's a new opportunity now called the ISL, which is really big. Um, but I still get nervous, like when I swim, but like that's great though, you know, yeah. you never know that what you're going to pop out a really good time. And like, I did it at our short course, uh, like, literally broke the. I didn't swim this event in over a year. It was a, at like Short Course Worlds was the last time I swam and I was a semifinalist there as well. Um, I broke the, broke my record by like 0. 0.4. That's crazy. It's crazy. And like that actually put a, that would have been like third at Europeans as well if I would have swam that event. But I swam like 12 events at Europeans. That's crazy. But I didn't do the 100 free. But like I just did it one time and didn't do it a year. Because usually you swim multiple times to get, get kind of used to it. Swam it once, got, would have got third. That's crazy. <laughs> like... Well, we are drawing to an end, so I'll ask you the big yeah, question yeah. that we ask everyone. So I kind of, I put this out to everyone, and the main goal is that we want to try and get a different idea and image of what it is to be successful. So mm-hmm. I literally will ask every guest to define it. So Shane, with all, well, not with all due respect, that's the wrong word, so we'll nip that out there, Patty. So Shane, what is your version of success, and word for word, how do you define it? So my, I usually try to, describe it as um, perseverance. You have to be driven and there's going to be ups and downs no matter where you go, what you do, you can't go on a straight line. There's going to be times where you're going to wake up in the morning and look at the alarm clock and just be like, ah, shit, I don't want to get out of bed. But you persevere and you get your ass up out of bed because you know that 20 minutes of actually laying in and missing practice or going late, it's going to haunt you. Yeah. You know, that point one of a second. And there's someone else out in the world that is working harder than you than that day because they actually got up, they ate the right way, and they went to practice. I want to be that guy that, like, always everyone's like, oh, shit, like, here's Shane. Yeah. Like, I want to be on that deck, walk around on deck, and people look at me like, that dude's, like, he's different. And I've already, I've already, this whole year, I've been, like, so focused on, like my mindset is just crazy. It's just like yeah. everything is just going in the well. And I'm honestly like just so grateful for everything, but it's all based on being per- like, I, I had that perseverance. Yeah. I'm getting up, I'm doing what I need to do, you know? And I'm just like, I'm enjoying it as well. That's deep. Um, but now said. people even said like my whole body shape, like everyone's like, even my uncles I haven't seen in like two, three weeks are like, Shane, you look like actually bigger, even though I lost weight, but he was like, you look bigger, you look healthier. You're like, you're just so confident. But it's just from every single step that you take, all those days, all those, all those like cheating meals, it's like they all add up to like a point where right now I'm just like living life and I'm loving life and but I'm just doing it. If you're pers- persevering, just to hop in on that, if you're persevering and you are doing all those wee tiny things right and well and you know you're putting extra energy in them, they give you confidence. Exactly. Like for example, um, I actually tried and tested this one time and there's one of the books that I was reading was all about developing confidence and building this and one of the tasks was just the psychological effect it had and I would actually ask anyone to do this um, 
getting up at 6 a.m., right? For some people, that's, that's standard. Yeah. You know? For me, it's not. It's the absolute opposite of, of standard for me. But um, it was how did doing that. I tried it for two weeks. And in the two weeks that I tried it, now it's unsustainable for me with my work routine. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer, you know, I go in at a, a normal time, but um, I tried it for two weeks and see the edge that it gave me mentally, just knowing, oh, you know, fuck, I'm up and my competitors are still in in their bed and I'm up doing this and, you know, there's people not even out in the road yet. And that's, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's a bit of a long-winded example, but it's exact, it's isolating what you've said is like, if you do do certain things a certain way, you will get this like, ungodly um kind of aura and everything yeah. yeah you know and it gives you like your own swag and what you're doing exactly it means that you can trust like that's one thing that i've seen in all the kind of big guys that we work with is that they are doing the wee thing serious mm -hmm. and it's something that uh, is really relative with you and that in itself will give you confidence because you can be like i guarantee he's not up doing this or i guarantee she's not up doing that whereas you are and mm -hmm. that'll already put you in, um, you know, that yeah. better mind state. But I'll just, we'll finish on this. How, word for word, how do you define success? And it's going to be difficult to conceptualize. And, oh, I or, couldn't even answer that one. Jesus, that's a hard one. Like for me, yeah. it's, for me, um, and this was an interesting thing, my version of success, or my definition of success is fulfilling your potential every day. Yeah. Every single day. Um, for me then, it's it's like... I enjoy what I do and you have to enjoy and you have to believe and you have to love like you have to love it like a child yeah. basically you know like it's your own little thing and that's what I like love doing with with my like success and everything like that past four years I came home with an international medal every year you know and I love doing that and, and I guess it's just um, just believing in yourself and making sure that you like you love what you do but you need to have that work ethic behind it and that exactly. perseverance so that's that's kind of like my little thing of um, about like success, that. yeah. I like that. Well, listen, mate, we'll finish on that high note. Um, thank you very much to everybody watching and listening. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much to you, Shane, for coming yeah, on no, board. No problem um, at all. Really enjoyed picking your mind. I'd maybe love to do a part two. We'll see. You're up, mm -hmm. you're up our neck of the yeah, yeah. soon. So. Yeah. Um, but yes, a uh, big thank goes to um, Gary at CrossFit 353. We are now in his new location. Um, such a nice facility yeah oh, unreal. yeah so um we'll actually get the creds in here potty um and get a good tag on across at 353 so yeah thank you gary thank you shane again for coming along and thank you to everybody watching and listening and i'll leave you with the ollie motto which is small victories repeated daily if you do this in your daily routines you will see success in some way shape or form so we'll close on that and thanks and talk to you later